Welcome to the Leo Full Moon happening on January 23rd and Mercury's moving direct. Now the Sun will enter Aquarius on January 20th and Aquarius is about the new age dawning. Aquarius is about energy. I'm energy, your energy and the astrology maps the energy patterns in motion. And so this is a wonderful time to tap into your creative power with the full moon in Leo. Now, if you want to read about the Leo full moon, you can go to my blog, click on the blog, and there you can read the Leo full moon. If you want to know what the Leo full moon means for you personally, you can go to my January astrology forecast. There I go into detail as to what the Leo full moon will mean for you individually. This Leo full moon is for all of us. Everyone has Leo somewhere in their chart. So Leo represents the creative individual. It is about you living from your authentic self, who you really are, using your gifts so that you are following your calling. Everyone has a calling. Everyone has a destiny. Everyone has a purpose. And when you align your gifts with your passion, with your values, that will tell you what your calling is. And I'm going to go into detail with that in the Business Love Program on Wednesday. Leo brings you to that part of your life that is about you demonstrating your gifts, your talent, your essence, your creativity, your love. Wherever it lands in your natal birth chart is where you are to demonstrate that talent, that calling, those gifts. Aquarius is where you are to be thinking of the collective, thinking of how you can be detached yet engaged so that you are integrating with others but you're not enmeshing in, you're not being codependent, you're not enabling others, you're showing up as you who you really are and you are being interdependent with others so that you're allowing other people to step up and master their lessons, master their karma so that they can ascend off the wheel of karma and become an ascended master. Self-mastery develops our masterhood so that we get off the wheel of karma and ascend and become the ascended master. They are ascended masters because they gained mastery over all 12 signs. They gained mastery over their negative ego and attained ascension. And so the Leo full moon is about you tapping into that childlike wonder, that childlike purity, that childlike essence that is the magic of the moment, that's living in the magic, that lives in the joy, that is authentic and creative. Aquarius is about being aware of the power of the whole, the power of community, the power of unity, that together we are unstoppable. Together we can do anything. We can save the planet, we can clean up the environment, we can restore integrity to our banking system. We can restore integrity to our governments. We can make corporations accountable for their actions and behavior. And we can lift up the communities so that we are all thriving. We are all here to thrive together. And as we raise up, we raise up elemental life. And we raise up the animal kingdom. We raise up the water kingdom. We raise up all parts of the planet. And that is the age of Aquarius. The age of Aquarius is not all of us acting alike, thinking alike, believing the same thing. It's about tolerance. It's about respecting different lifestyles, different beliefs, different value systems. 
and allowing everyone to be who they really are. Now, the Aquarius Sun and the Leo Moon are loosely being challenged by Mars. Mars is in Scorpio. And as the moon moves forward, it will get you know, closer to the uh, challenge by uh, Mars, and so will the sun. It's about seven degrees, you know, seven degrees apart right now. But it is worth mentioning, with that Mars and Scorpio, that's going to be a very big conversation this year in the astrology forecast. And if you go to my year ahead, I talk a lot about it there because that's where I, I did a, a big scan of the entire year, 2016. So here he's showing up at this Leo full moon. It's interesting, um, he shows up in the, uh, the moon charts next month too. So Mars is pretty active here in Scorpio. Mars likes being in Scorpio. He is the traditional ruler of Scorpio. Mars is the planet of action and desire. So having him at the full moon, and I'm glad it's loose, it's not tight on there, because that could create a lot of arguments with people. Full moons are oppositions, and oppositions bring awarenesses to us through our relationships. It can bring awareness to you right out of your unconscious, right out of your subconscious, because a full moon shines light. And when that full moon is, is uh, there, it can bring up from your subconscious past memories, it can bring up past life memories, it can bring up things that have happened to you in the past, even some trauma, and with Mars there T-squaring it, you can shift easily into anger. So be aware if you find yourself getting irritable or angry from something that's happened, allow that energy to come up and come out. Channel it into physical exercise. Channel it into a physical project. That is a wonderful way to use the intensity of Mars. Or making love. Make love, not war. Because, you know, part of the Mars energy, you know, especially as it T-squares the sun and the moon, father, mother, male, female, it's going to affect relationships and there can be a lot of sexual tension. It can bring up sexual tension. And if you're not making love, then you can shift into arguments, right? Because energy cannot be destroyed, only transformed. Einstein. And so the energy has to go somewhere. And so if you're not making love with it, you may find yourselves arguing or bickering or nitpicking with the energy. So be aware of that, that you want to channel the Martian energies, anger, arrogance, argumentation, accusation, aggression. Those are Martian energies. You want to channel those energies into physically working out. Go for a walk, go for a brisk walk, go for a jog. Go do something physical so that the energy has a release and then you feel better and you're being proactive rather than reactive because this is a full moon and full moons bring emotions to a head they bring situations to a head and it can bring up conflict in relationships every full moon is an opposition which can bring up conflict in relationships and so this is your time to be aware of what you need. That's why we want to practice healthy selfishness. When you do what's right for you, it's right for others. And it, if you want to own a business, if you want to be successful, if you really want to tap into your gifts and your talents, you have to be selfish. Now, that does not mean you don't have empathy for others. That's narcissism. That's the perversion of Leo. The perversion of Leo, or the dark side of Leo, is that arrogance and narcissism where you see everyone as an object that's there to feed your ego. And if they're not feeding your ego, you get rid of them. That's, there's no love there. And there's no empathy for others. Selfishness means you're putting your soul self first. You're putting your God self first. You have empathy for others, 
but they're not more important than you. You don't allow other people to run over your boundaries. You don't allow other people to get in your space. You don't allow people to disrespect you or abuse you in any way. You love yourself more than the need for relationship. Relationship is a want. It's not a need. And I'm going to talk a lot about this in the Best Life program on Wednesday. Food is a need. Sleep is a need. Water is a need. You cannot live without sleep and water and food. You can live without a relationship. So you want to understand that relationship, whether it's a friend or a relative or a partner, they are a want. They're not a need. You want them if they add value to your life. You want them if they make your life better. Make relationship a want, not a need. Take the power back so that you have that power to pour into your talents, your gifts, and your abilities. And you are, you're, you're fulfilling your destiny, right? Because you don't want to be distracted by negative relationships or relationships that you are allowing to pull you down take you off path, distract you when you need to be focused on your calling. You need to be focused on your, the development of your personal self, your soul, your gifts, your talents, and your abilities. So the Leo full moon is a wonderful reminder to make sure that you are nourishing and nurturing your inner child, your soul, and your gifts so that you are fulfilling your destiny, you are fulfilling your purpose of why you're here and your calling. So, remember the law of attraction is always matching and it doesn't matter what's going on in the astrology. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. What matters is your point of attraction. What are you attracting? What is showing up in your life? You change on the inside to see the outside change. A lot of times people think they relocate, they move, they change partners, they get online and they get rid of the partner they're with or the partner they were with got rid of them and they get right into the next relationship. And then nothing's changed. It's the same patterns that are going on. That's because you can change relationships on the outside, but if you haven't changed on the inside, you're still in the same patterns. And you can relocate all over the planet, but wherever you go, you take your astrology with you. So we have to change on the inside. That's why the focus is on you and me, not on other people. It doesn't matter what other people are doing. It matters what you are doing. You're only responsible for the things you can control. And that's your own behavior. That's what you're thinking. Not what other people are thinking, not what other people are doing but what you're doing, your behavior, which is great relief because that's where the power is. The power is with what you do, what you think, what you believe, what you know, how you act, how you behave. Do you show up with integrity? Do you show up with honor? Are you making right choices for you? Are you making right choices in your life? If you are, you're going to be attracting what you want. If you're not, then what is the pattern that you are demonstrating and what can you change today so that you feel good about yourself, you feel empowered, and you're living your best life? Now, there's another story going on here at the time of the full moon, and that's with Mr. Mercury. Talk about busy. Mercury has been in Capricorn and he's been retrograde. He is going direct on the 25th. He's also coupling with Pluto. And I talked about this in the December forecast and I talked about this in the January forecast because it is very significant. Mercury is going to couple with Pluto on the 29th. And so this is a celebratory moon. The Leo full moon is a party moon. It's a fun moon. However, as that moon moves on, you know, a couple hours later, it is challenged by Mars. And that can create the antagonism. That can create conflict. So we want to be aware of, you know, what, what's going on in the environment, what's going on inside of us, and, you know, how to navigate the um, potential 
discord that can come up with, with the uh, Martian energy. At the same time, with Mercury coupling with Pluto, this too can bring out the shadow side in others and ourselves. So in other words, Mercury is in Capricorn and he is coupling with Pluto and it already happened once on December 19th and it will happen on January 22nd and then it will happen on January 29th. Pluto is power and transformation, but it's also the dark side of human nature. And when you put the messenger next to Pluto, this can bring up the shadow side and it can bring up the negative personality, people acting out in negative ways, people being nasty, being nasty in communication, being nasty in behavior. And so you want to be aware of that, that this is, January is not a light month. It's not a month of, woo, let's just party and, you know, hang out. You know, this is a, a very intense month. It's been a very challenging month. Uh, the, look at the stock markets. They have been um, co being corrected this month. So there's a lot going on with this energy. And with Mercury coupling with Pluto, you can get obsessed in your thinking as well. Now, on the one hand, I like Mercury conjunct Pluto because you have laser-like vision and you can cut through the lies and you can cut through the games and you can get to the source of the problem very quickly. You can get to the heart of the matter very quickly. It can also be an energy, the Pluto-Mercury coupling can be also an energy of where you obsess, where you're obsessive in your thinking or you're obsessing about something, you're worrying too much. You are a powerful creator. You are powerful. And you forget that. And you don't realize that you're creating your reality. And the law of attraction is always matching. And so, wherever the mind goes, energy follows. So if you're worrying, you're using the power of your mind to create what you don't want. When you worry, you focus on the negative. You focus on what you don't want. Now, I know it's very easy to do with this Mercury couple with Pluto. That's why I'm mentioning it. Because even though we're at the Leo full moon, which is, uh, you know, can be a fun moon, a playful time, it may not feel that way. Because Mercury is coupling with Pluto. He's also coupling with Uranus. But it's even, uh, he's being squared by Uranus, excuse me. However, the world work is coming through the Pluto because, you know, Pluto brings up out of the unconscious, it brings up out of the shadows um, what's really going on. And sometimes seeing the truth or the darkness in self and others can be very challenging because we want to focus on the positive. We want to be light. We want to focus on the good. However, you can't step over the dark side of human behavior or the dark side that's coming up because it, it's part of us. It's part of what makes us whole. And so it's coming up for a reason to empower you to see things clearly. However, you don't want to focus on the negative. You can acknowledge that it's there. But the power is being proactive, not reactive. Your power is focusing on the good in your life, what's working in your life, and not on the negative. So there's a balance going on here between the light and the dark, and your opportunity is to bring awareness around the situations, to bring awareness around where you're unhappy. Are you unhappy in your relationship? Are you unhappy in your work? Are you unhappy in where you are living? This is the opportunity. Full moons bring conscious awareness. They bring light to what's been brewing below the surface where Pluto is. And Mercury is the messenger. He's the only planet that can travel all levels of consciousness. He is the only planet that can be, you know, in conscious awareness, in the subconscious, in the unconscious, the superconscious. Mercury is the messenger. And he may be bringing to you conscious awareness of things that need to change. And I go into detail in that in the January forecast, but that will be wherever Capricorn lands in your natal birth chart is where you're being awakened to 
changes you need to make. You may need to change your work. You may need to change your habits. You may need to change you know, things that you're doing so that you're living your best life. You are here to live your best life. But in order to live your best life, you have to be willing to change. And you have to be willing to be selfish. And selfish, be more selfish. Set better boundaries. Raise your standards. Love you more than the need for approval of others. Love you more than the need for others to get you. Love you more than the need to keep that person in your life who's really not making you happy, but you're just kind of hanging there, right? We get comfortable. And so Pluto and Mercury, they're going to be revealing to you the truth in many situations. That's what this energy does. The full moon brings conscious awareness, and then Mercury is moving direct on the 25th, which is good news, absolutely. But we're not out of the woods yet, because Mercury is going to go back over Uranus again, and that will be on the 31st of January. So you see? So Mercury is dancing with Uranus and Pluto till the end of the month. And that puts those two together. Those two have not separated. They're still at each other. So we're not over the Pluto-Uranus energy either. That energy has been so strong here in December and January. It's correcting the stock markets, right? What is the real integrity in banking? What is the real integrity in each corporation, in each situation? Are we just puffing things up? Are we just, you know, making things look good when they're really not good. That can be the Leo moon too, where we just, you know, pomp and circumstance and, you know, we pretend that everything's wonderful and Pluto and Uranus with Mercury are just ripping it apart. <laughs> like, where's the integrity in this? Where's the integrity in the stock market? Where's the integrity in this corporation? Where's, the, where's your integrity? Where's my integrity? Where is our integrity? And so there's a lot happening here this month and the Leo full moon is going to be, be bringing things to conscious awareness. And the Mercury is the messenger. And he's going to be bringing messages to all of us about what's really going on in our lives, what's really going on in the economy, what's really going on in our governments, what's really going on on the planet. And the truth will set us free. We may not like it. But it's better to know the truth because you can, you can make real choices and you, can, and you can make your life better when you know the truth of what's really going on. So once we get to February, things really lighten up. And that's why I couldn't wait to get the February forecast out because I wanted to bring some positive energy to myself and all of us because you know, December was really challenging and January has not been easy. And this Mercury retrograde has really been, you know, a very challenging time and getting beat up by Pluto and Uranus is not uh, fun, you know, but it is important because we need to know what's really going on. You can't fix the problem if you don't acknowledge it. You can't fix What's broken if you just pretend that everything's nice and everything's wonderful when it isn't. And so here's the opportunity to clean out what's not working. Let go of what no longer serves you. Let it go. And there what it remains is the phoenix rising from the ashes, is the empowered self, is the authentic self who's ready to join with other like-minded light bearers. The Aquarius new moon is awesome, by the way. That's, it. That's coming up here on February 8th. So with the Mercury moving direct on the 25th, yes, you can move ahead with your plans. If you want to start a new job, you want to move, um, you can when Mercury goes direct. But I really love the Aquarius new moon for starting new jobs, starting new businesses, launching new products, launching new businesses, starting new relationships, moving, you know, anything new you want to start. I, you know, as the astrologer, you are the authority of your life. I would recommend waiting till 
the uh, Aquarius new moon on February 8th, which is Stella, and, you know, ride the wave now and see what comes up. See what's being revealed to you of what's pushing your buttons. What is the universe trying to show you? Once we get to February, things get much easier and lighter. And so there's great value in challenging times. As much as we want to get to the good stuff, there is great value. We learn our self-mastery. We learn self-love self-appreciation, self-respect, as well as love for others, empathy for others, compassion for others. We're all in this together. And it's all about taking care of you so that you are living your best life and fulfilling your calling.